All right. Good morning, folks. How's it going out there? It is the Earth Master, 946 a.m. That's California time here where I'm at. April 3rd, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a current quake of a 1.8 across Southern California. We'll check that out here in just a little bit. Uh, man, got a lot of activity stirring up here south of Iceland along the Atlantic Rift Boundary. We're a 6.9 struck here earlier this morning. This originally came in as a 6.8. Then uh, I think it got downgraded to 6.3 and then back up to a 6.9. So it's a very powerful earthquake out there in the mid or actually northern Atlantic Ridge boundary up here. This is the area where spreading seafloor center activity occurs. Although I think it might be, uh, might be associated with a strike slip boundary it looks like. But the overall pattern up here, if you look south of Iceland, got the arrows pointing away from each, uh, each other, indicating that uh, divergent boundary movement. And they don't get much bigger than that. Uh, if they do, then something's going on. But uh, 6.9 underneath the area, historically within the same region, um, they run about 6.9 up to a 7.1 magnitude that... Uh, similar to what they had back in uh, 2015. Uh, but aside from that, like I said, they, there's no way it could really get that much bigger because of the dynamics out there uh, along the oceanic crust. Like I say, if it, if it does, then something drastic is happening out here on the planet. But uh, 6.9, decent earthquake, decent earthquake for sure. Uh, the last one of a six-pointer was back in 2022. Uh, no effect on Iceland up here, but I do believe it's an overall... Uh, adjustment going on out here underneath the region probably quite a bit of convection underneath this area causing the splitting of the plates uh, the mid-atlantic ridge has been, definitely had a lot of activity here recently as well if we go back the last 30 days um, down here a number of uh, sixes 6.6 .6. that uh, activity um, was followed by all the seven pointers you know the Myanmar earthquake the Tonga earthquake uh, so now we got some newer activity up north here uh, and large. This is not small activity, newer activity that could trigger uh, some further strain out against the area, depending on where that general strain is going to move off to. Uh, most of the time, uh, it could affect the North American plate because we've got the divergent boundary activity, but also at the same time, uh, it could affect areas to the east here. So we'll see what happens. I don't see any... Um, noticeable uptick here either way yet uh, up north yes around Iceland and uh, even further up north uh, seeing some newer quake activity uh, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely watch here and see if things don't amplify across this area of the Mediterranean potentially uh, all I know is we got uh, a lot of activity stirring up here underneath this region more so than what we've uh, had here in, in quite a while up and down the board way north and the middle Atlantic Ridge here and now we got this activity stirring up today that's a definitely a decent earthquake almost a seven pointer so a handful of aftershocks following that 6.9 uh, looks to be uh, 5.4 the latest here in the last hour so we'll keep an eye on that that's a, a definitely a decent sized earthquake I was checking out Iceland here just a little bit ago this is the uh, last six hours. We're looking at uh, shows 395 earthquakes with most of the movement further up north of Grindavik. The most recent eruption produced a little fissure, uh, eruptive fissure there north of Grindavik, but within the protective barrier uh, that was short-lived. Uh, and then we also had a fissure event up north here. And the majority of the magma dike, the intrusion there, uh, is taking place up north here where all the earthquake activity is occurring right now um, and a lot down south here so I believe this is some type of overall um, bigger pattern out here uh, so to speak and of course when you get these plates out here on the move or separating so to speak we can see uh, you know an intense increase in volcanic activity across the region uh, the latest, where'd my, here it goes, latest info from the Icelandic Met Office here that was put out today uh, shows, shows that the brief eruption uh, came to an end, but seismicity is continuing. 
That tells me right there that magma is still on the move and we are not done yet. Uh, there is some significant uncertainty uh, regarding the continuation of this event as a high number of small earthquakes are still detected at the northern end of the dike. So that could uh, obviously, obviously stir up here. So we'll have to watch that and see what happens as the um, days progress here. But that's a, definitely a decent earthquake. Goodness. All right, as far as California activity goes, let's go ahead and take a look. We'll bring up the USGS map, the latest one. And uh, let's see. Let's zoom in here real quick, see if anything's changing out here across Southern California. Not a whole lot. Uh, here's a 2.5 map and above. we got a 2.6 and a 2.6. One in Nevada, one in Petrolia, Northern California area. That uh, Just a little bit of movement out there. Nothing big happening for now. Uh, I don't see any unusual activity across the uh, state of California. Just typical microquake movement. Same for the Pacific Northwest. One earthquake here around Mount St. Helens. At, uh, just a little bitty earthquake, 0.1. Uh, Yellowstone, I know last night uh, a little bit of earthquake activity happening there. Looks like USGS reporting uh, some of those quakes. Handful of those quakes out there, it looks like. Let's go ahead and double check that. See what we got for today's event, uh, which is going to be here. The third, there it is from last night. Mary Lake picking it up, Upper Falls. A little bit of earthquake activity occurring there. There's a, I, there's a lot more, though, than what's being shown here on this little map. Seven earthquakes. Uh, yeah, where were we? Back over here, right? There's a lot more than seven. So they're only counting these uh, larger ones. Uh, not necessarily the smaller ones, but there's still earthquakes in between, right? There's the 6.9 earthquake along with the seismic waves that were produced following it. Uh, so not a lot of earthquake activity, uh, as far as large earthquake activity happening there across Yellowstone. Just uh, got uh, a little bit of microquake movement. And as you can see, uh, the largest, a 1.7. So not that big of a deal. Just some periodic swarming there across Yellowstone. Oil fields getting hit pretty good, though, across the uh, Permian Basin region, outside of Odessa, Midland, Texas region. Earthquakes galore in the gas fields. Who would have thought? Oklahoma up there as well. A little bit of earthquake activity. New Madrid seismic zone. One earthquake outside the region, it looks like. A little 1.5. And some movement out here in Georgia. Groovetown? Or is that Grovetown? I guess that would be... Grove Town. I was going to say, they got a Groove Town? All right. 1.9 and a 2.0 outside of Augusta. Uh, New Zealand down there. I know I was kind of waiting for some further activity here, but we never uh, never got it. Following this movement yesterday, there's been a trail of earthquakes down here across the South Pacific Ocean and the plate boundary here between Antarctica. Nothing happening, though across that region for now of New Zealand, but we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Japan, pretty quiet. And uh, I guess we'll just kind of keep an eye on things today, see where this pressure transpires or where it migrates to following uh, this divergent boundary activities. Because most of the time out here, when things start to split, so to speak, that's when it puts the plates into motion, similar to what we've seen here or what we had a couple days ago with the six pointers down here in the mid-Atlantic Ridge. That triggered a swarm of earthquakes here across the planet in the 7 range. Space weather activity, not a whole lot there for flaring. Uh, we do have this massive sunspot 4048 that is currently facing us. Uh, a look at the magnetogram image here shows uh, a little bit of decaying going on, it looks like. But not uh, completely going to discredit this one. We do have a potential here of some maybe some M and X flare. Uh, as that is currently almost directly facing the Earth. A little one up here is starting to grow as well. Not much behind this area, uh, so we'll just see what happens here in the days ahead. 4048, though, is the one to watch for right now. 15% uh, chance of X flare, M flare at 70. I'm still keeping my X flare potential up there a little bit. No major roars in the forecast, although they have added a little. A little bit of aurora potential here over the next couple nights, and I believe that's just due to a coronal hole that had been facing us, but uh, it was just a tiny one, so I, I don't know. I, I'm really not expecting much in terms of the auroras coming up.
Storm Prediction Center. Man, what a bunch of severe weather yesterday and last night, right? A lot of tornado activity coming in. This is from yesterday here. 29 reports of tornadoes. That's just preliminary. That could get upgraded. Today so far, one report of tornado activity. Uh, that severe weather that uh, is taking place there across the Midwest and South, it looks like. Portions of the South, including Texas here. Slight risk and an enhanced area for some tornado activity today. Wind and some hail threats out there. So just be on guard if you're in those regions. All right, folks, you have a wonderful day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Just kind of keeping an eye on the graphs here, seeing what uh, kicks up after, you know, we've been pretty busy out here in terms of the earthquake activity. Uh, and I'm thinking that will continue today following the newer movement up in the Atlantic Ridge boundary. Kind of puts all the plates into motion there. So we'll see where this uh, leads to. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here a little bit later on unless something major happens. Have a good one.